Good morning. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Corey Williams, Executive Director of Sustainable Tulsa, and welcome to today's Virtual Business to Business Case for Sustainability series. It's the last of our 2020 series and our 2020 Bellman Awards winner panel. And uh, we're, we're glad to be with you uh, today. We're, we're sorry we're not in person, um, but we're, we're glad that you've joined us this way and it's nice to see everyone's faces and, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to say hello here at the end as well. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge our board members that are here today. So if you'll please raise your hand when we call your name, uh, Stephanie Cameron, Richard Cox, uh, Aaron Larder, Mike Lemus, Matt Newman, Carrie Rowland, Pam Taylor, and James Williams have joined us today. And we appreciate uh, their leadership uh, through, again, through this year. It's been, an, as everyone is aware and experiencing themselves, uh, it's been a strange year and they've been great to, to help Sustainable Tulsa move forward in this, this year. I also want um, to say thank you and introduce my the staff again, Sustainable Tulsa staff. We have the marketing and events manager, Megan Hurley, give a wave there. Uh, Jill Maud, our uh, office specialist and our new scorecard manager, Teresa Kerrigan. Uh, very Good excited morning. to her on the team and uh, send her a welcome in the chat and uh, welcome her uh, to the team. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about her in just a minute. I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge some of our businesses that sponsor our B2B Case for Sustainability series, Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality and the Oklahoma Secretary of Energy and Environment. Thank you so much for your lead support of our work and American Waste Control, Integrity, Miller Environmental Transfer, One Oak and Spirit Air Systems. Uh, literally, we couldn't do this work without your support, and thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate uh, that, and you can also see uh, uh, on the screen, we'll be sharing other sponsors that have also been uh, supportive of our work and, and supporting the B2B Case for Sustainability series. Uh, we're stream, uh, extremely grateful, of course, and give them all a virtual round of applause. Uh, Sustainable Tulsa's Business Council goal is to make the business case for sustainability. And when we started this off in 2012, we really thought, uh, you know, this was gonna be a bold endeavor, but we quickly realized the case was there and there were so many uh, experts in the Tulsa area in Oklahoma uh, ready to share best practices. And that's the other purpose of our B2B program is to connect each of you with, uh, with other businesses with, uh, that can share those best practices. So uh, I think we're, we continue to accomplish that and, and we thank you all for joining us and doing, uh, sharing your best practices with your colleagues here. Also, when a, it's also an opportunity to connect to Scorecard, which is our online sustainability tracking and assessment tool for organizations who want to track and improve their sustainability plans using that triple bottom line strategy of people, profit, and planning. And this is a holistic approach to sustainability and allows organizations to engage employees, bolster their economic growth, and become better environmental stewards. So uh, we, we are excited to share with you some of our, our top performers, of course. Uh, Sustainable Tulsa also manages several other programs to help us uh, with our mission to building that resilient community for generations to come, including First Thursday program, our new Oklahoma Green Living page, and our website, uh, on our website, and Teresa will be sharing some of those links in the chat window here in just a moment. Um, if you are a company interested in moving further on, sustain, on your sustainability journey, then message Teresa and uh, she can assist you with joining Scorecard and becoming a member. And speaking of Scorecard, just a couple updates. We'll be reopening Scorecard next week. You will see a few added items and a few updates, but it will uh, follow essentially the same format and pricing as last year. So no big changes, but um, some nice refreshing and we will be updating that. Uh, we'll be opening that back up next uh, week. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, Teresa Kerrigan, which is our new scorecard manager, just joined our team last week. So we're getting her um, uh, familiar with our programs and she is eager to meet you here, uh, our scorecard members and potential new members. Teresa brings years of experience translating data into meaningful insights. And along with her master's in environmental resource policy uh, from George Washington University, she also brings a passion for sustainability and a commitment to teamwork. 
She currently resides in New York, but she'll be joining uh, Sustainable Tulsa in Tulsa in 2021, and we can't wait to meet her actually in person. Uh, she will be reaching out to you, each of you individually next week, uh, eager to meet you and to assist you in your scorecard uh, endeavor this next year. And uh, we will also be having a scorecard workday December 4th virtually and look for that email coming your way from Teresa uh, and from the team. Um, you can also visit the website at scorecard.com uh, to read more about the updates that are coming and see the new website as well. So now, um, again, we've got a great program uh, to celebrate the successes of a group of, um, of our scorecard members that really persevered in this uh, strange year and we're excited to celebrate them. Uh, so we're ready to kick off that panel. And I wanna give a big thank you to our board president, Mike Lemus, for moderating today's panel. And for those of you who do not know Mike, I wanna take a moment, just briefly introduce him. A longtime Tulsan, Mike serves as the 2020 Sustainable Tulsa board president, recently retired. He spent 40 years as an educator and administrator at three colleges in Oklahoma and Illinois, where he led numerous sustainability initiatives. And um, now he spends his time tending to a garden, tweaking his golf swing and serving his community as a volunteer. And he certainly has done that for Sustainable Tulsa. We are thrilled uh, to be working with you this year, Mike. And I would like to now turn it over to Mike. Thank you, Mike. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, after a year and a half of uh, not wearing a tie, I decided for this occasion, I'm gonna put a tie on and guess what, it still works. So uh, I'm pleased to be with you this morning and I'm pleased to uh, moderate a panel of our uh, Bellman winners. And uh, these are organizations that are among the vanguard of Tulsa organizations who have made sustainability part of their core mission. In a very short time, I think you'll come to recognize and they'll be widely recognized as exemplars of the TBL, the triple bottom line. So let's get started. Uh, our format today will look like this. I'll introduce our, our panelists. Uh, their video will, will play. And then the panelists will briefly highlight their achievements and future plans after each panelist has presented. We'll answer some questions. Anytime you have a question, uh, please send your question in a private chat message to Teresa, as Corey mentioned a few minutes ago. And we'll be sure to get them at the end of all the presentations. So let's get started. Um, Graham Brannan. Graham holds a BS degree in geology and petroleum engineering, from the University of Tulsa. He has spent 15 years in the oil industry before entering the environmental compliance consulting business, and then working 20 years in the city of Tulsa in environmental protection. His environmental passion began at the first Earth Day in 1970 by walking two miles of school. And by the way, Graham, I did the same thing in 1970. So. Um, that's how I got started in this, in this business. Uh, he then led a, a Crow Creek cleanup at Zing Park in 72 at age 12. Came back to this park and creek when he became a Blue Thumb Monitor in 98. And he still supports conservation of, in that watershed. Uh, Graham accepted the executive director position at the, the Met, the Metropolitan Environmental Trust in 2015. He retired from that position just recently, uh, this past summer. He actively supports the Tulsa community in a variety of organizations and in efforts, including, yay, a cheerleading role for Sustainable Tulsa. So, uh, Graham, I'd like to hear from this one. I look forward to it. The Metropolitan Environmental Trust is Sustainable Tulsa's 2020 Bellman Award winner in the micro business category for achievements toward their triple bottom line people, profit, planet. Through the scorecard, the region's first business sustainability tracking and assessment tool. Here is their story. We had to expand our thinking. We've always been all about the environment. That's our, our core mission. But we needed to think more about the people angle, especially. And so that really involves making sure we're treating our employees correctly and, and our contracted employees, which includes our folks that work at our recycling centers and they have uh, developmental disabilities. And so we really need to make sure we're treating them uh, in the most appropriate, proper way and, and giving them the recognition they deserve. Then, of course, the scorecard guided us. And, and without it, we would be kind of ambling along lost. So we had that guide, then it, it took off and we started getting excited about it. Our employee 
a retention angle, which is by bringing on our educator as a full-time employee with benefits. And this is the culmination of a three-year process where we've brought on one employee. We've gotten the budget dollars to bring on one employee each year. So now all of our employees um, have benefits. A couple other things we've been proud of doing is benchmarking our energy. We played around with it and we kind of did some of it in the past, but this year we really got those numbers in and uh, through the EPA portfolio manager. And we have some numbers that we can say, okay, we're doing great. Or we're, you know, we have a lot of room for improvement and a couple of different buildings. One project that we're really proud of and that I think everybody got around and, and supported downtown bar and restaurant recycling program. This is really for um, some of these smaller operations where they're uh, space constrained, you know, alleys, that kind of stuff. There's almost no room and, uh, or perhaps they're really uh, financially strapped and, uh, and so they could use a, a helping hand. We've been able to do that and pick up their recyclables and also go through their process what they do inside and give them advice. And uh, here, here's how you could set it up a little better. Here's how you can uh, limit your contamination, those kind of things. And glass is one of those things that a lot of times it doesn't get recycled. And it's not the worst thing to the environment, but it's extremely recyclable and should be recycled. On the recycling side, kind of our core mission, it's all about numbers. So we're trying to increase the access to recycling for the public and then try to increase the numbers, how much we're recycling. And that is, is a variety of items. So it's, it's beyond what a curbside program would accept. A few different boards that I report to. The first is a board of trustees from all these local governments. We meet monthly. And so we report all those numbers to them. As far as general sustainability, it's really all about the scorecard and uh, how that's the best way to measure. We communicate that with our leaders. And that includes also a couple other boards. One board, uh, another board I report to is the chair board in Tulsa. So we're reporting all this information to them. It's really widened our approach and our goals past just those and to concentrate more on uh, community stewardship, for instance, helping other organizations, especially nonprofits, be successful in what they do. As far as the Bellman Award, what it means means to our organization. It's something that inspires us to do more, but it's also, to be frank, it's something we can use as a tool to be even more impactful in our mission. So if we can use this achievement to do more for the environment and for our employees and for the public, that is a great win. Hey, I really appreciate um, the opportunity to be here today. And it, it's, I'm, I'm obviously accepting the award on behalf of the Met um, as the outgoing uh, director. So uh, um, it's a great honor. And uh, I, hope, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, I'm out in the country, so it, we have country Wi-Fi out here. It's, it's not always good. But uh, anyway, uh, obviously we couldn't do this uh, work Without all the all the help we got, um, but the Met is is a is a small entity, you know, seven employees and contracted workers. But uh, but we like to think we're pretty mighty. And I don't know if anybody remembers Underdog, but uh, I can hum the tune right now. Uh, but you don't want to hear that. But anyway, so uh, it, it we kind of uh, think that we can accomplish a lot with just a little. So. We're happy to do that. Uh, if you could hit the next slide, please. Okay, one thing uh, we, as we're going to the next, there we go. Um, you know, it's all about the triple bottom line for us and, and even more so with the scorecard. Um, as said in, in the uh, video, uh, the uh, planet part is just our core business. And uh, so obviously it's extremely important and we always wanna do better, but the other two legs of the stool is what we had to work on a little bit more with the scorecard and it helped us um, do right by the people portion, which uh, community uh, stewardships one part and then our employees, very important. 
Um, and then uh, the profit angle for us, we're a semi-governmental entity. So it's more about fiscal responsibility and uh, handling uh, the dollars that are given us in the best way possible. So uh, the, the team that we have, you can see there and uh, with our proud uh, gold uh, scorecard achievement and uh, Ali Kalanak led our team and she's uh, our education manager. Uh, and then we had Gail Lewis, uh, an assistant I'm in the a, office, uh, Clint Mark, what? field supervisor. Excuse me. Okay. Um, and then uh, Bailey Veal, who's our TU intern. We always have an intern. And then uh, the, our coach was Alicia Peck with One Gas, and she was amazing. She brought her military expertise to uh, whip us into shape. So that was really important for us. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, as far as our achievements, some of these, you know, were just this year, some of them were ongoing. Uh, so I, we, I kind of go through the uh, people uh, profit planet. So for the people side, um, we're always proud of, about our program, uh, employing adults with developmental disabilities at our centers. And, and uh, that is a showcase of what we can do. Um, it's a win-win, it's great for the, for the community uh, and it's great for our workers there. So uh, can't be more proud of that. And during COVID that's been a big challenge, uh, but they've uh, reached that challenge. The biggest challenge is to, is to keep social distancing because these folks wanna be uh, around folks and uh, as we all do. And then uh, um, bringing all our full-time workers uh, with benefits. That was huge as mentioned in the video. And, uh, and then being able to do some of the community uh, stewardship uh, things for one by sponsoring obviously sustainable Tulsa is important to us uh, and then the Oklahoma Recycling Association keep Oklahoma beautiful that's a few to mention uh, on the uh, profit or, or fiscal responsibility I would say uh, side is we've uh, been building a rainy day fund and now it's up to $177,000 uh, which for us is big money uh, and it's, it's not our goal, but it's getting there. And uh, that's a, a great change for us. And then our total assets are up to 413,000, a 17% increase over last year. Uh, and then that full-time staff uh, accomplishment. So those we're proud of. As far as the planet side, um, last year we reached over 11,000 children, uh, you know, pretty much hands-on education. Uh, almost completely by Ali Kalanak, which is an amazing accomplishment. Um, they're doing a lot with a little, uh, no offense, Ali. But uh, anyway, we also recycled about 5 million pounds of, of materials. That was a 3% increase, which was great for us. And uh, we also had our biggest collection event, um, we call the Big Spring Clean, and that was with Cox Media Group. They were incredible at promoting it. And uh, so, uh, kudos to them. And that event was insane. Um, you can see some of the numbers there, but uh, over 50,000 pounds of e-waste in uh, one day was a uh, pretty scary amount. It was incredible. And uh, we plan on doing it again uh, on my birthday, March 6th of uh, next year. So pr pretty excited about all those numbers. Next slide, please. Okay, well, that kind of concludes what I wanted to present. Obviously, I could talk forever, uh, but you don't want to hear all that. But we're here, uh, Partners for the Environment, and we love being partners with Sustainable Tulsa. It's just an integral part of everything we do. And I appreciate and, and, and accept this, uh, this Bellman Award with great uh, humility. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Graham, on uh, accomplishments at the Met. and. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. Uh, I know you're going to stay busy up there in the country. So I'm uh, looking forward to all the things you're going to do in retirement as well. Okay, so thank uh, you. On to um, our next uh, recipient and uh, recipient organization and representing the organization, Sheila Vega. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. Um, the Environmental Compliance Coordinator for City of Tulsa Water and Sewer Department. 
She's a graduate of Northeastern State University with a BS in biology. She has led the charge of sustainability for the city at the Elwood office since 2018. At home, she and her husband, Nathan, raised three strapping young men and are working towards building a sustainable farm near Henrietta. So on a personal note, I, um, I used to coordinate something called EcoFest at Northeast Campus of Tulsa Community College. And every year, the city of Tulsa Water and Sewer Department signed up to be a table vendor. And I was very grateful for them and their innova innovations that they were involved in. And I'm sure Sheila's continuing that, that great tradition. So Sheila, I'll turn it over to you. City of Tulsa Water and Sewer Elwood location is sustainable Tulsa's 2020 Bellman Award winner in the small business category for achievements toward their triple bottom line, people, profit, planet. Through the scorecard, the region's first business sustainability tracking and assessment tool. Here is their story. We have some people who go out and monitor drinking water in the distribution system to make sure our drinking water is safe. We also have people who monitor waste coming from industries or restaurants to make sure that the quality of water going into the waste stream is also acceptable. Elwood has a robust recycling program. We took styrofoam out of our kitchen and we've also provided reusable plates and silverware and cups and all of the dishes somebody might need for uh, making food so they don't have to use anything disposable. We track all of our uh, utility information in the EPA portfolio manager. So we track electricity use, uh, water use, gas use. We also have signs around our office reminding people to use less water or turn the lights off when they leave. We have these plants that people can take to their office and they can keep it in there until it needs care and they can bring it back to the, my, my office and get another plant if they want it. We did some air quality monitoring and actually came up with results that the air quality in my office specifically where all of the plants are is better than the rest of the office without plants. So we've actually seen measurable differences just because of the plants being in there. Last year we planted our Monarch Way station. It was during the flood and it ended up being a little baby garden. We would go out some days and find dozens of Monarch caterpillars and I had people in my office coming to me every day giving me updates on all of these caterpillars that we're finding and they watched them pupate and turn into chrysalises and then hatch and turn into Monarch butterflies and it's been really a, a very big team building experience. Twice a year, I get our sustainability team together and we go over every single point on the scorecard. And we try to determine, you know, if we've never gotten a point on something, what can we do to get that point? And if we already have a point on something, what can we do to improve it? Because continuous improvement is our goal. I also do annual training with our staff to tell them what we're doing and what we want them to do and what our goals are. And I send them email updates frequently to let them know, you know, this is what we're doing. These are our successes. And this is what you've done to help this program. These emails also get forwarded to management and upper management and upper management will take it to the utility board and even the mayor knows what we're doing. To me, the scorecard gives me a scaffolding to where I can gather all of this information from wherever it is and I can give that to my people and tell them these are the things that are available that we're already doing or it's something that you can participate in. We're getting an award for doing a good job and we can use that to say, you know, our office is a small group with just 20 something people and hardly any budget. And if we can win this award, then anybody can do it. If the city is doing the sustainability stuff, then maybe the next city will see that, well, Tulsa is doing sustainability initiatives, why can't we? And then the next city will say, well, they're doing it, why can't we? And we can make a global difference just by acting locally. I was not um, super prepared for the PowerPoint today, but um, like I said in the video, a lot of the stuff is repeated from the video, but um, 
We're water quality assurance for the city. Um, we test the water, monitor, make sure that everything is um, healthy going into your house or coming out of uh, places in the city. So um, next slide. Our Monarch Way station is my very favorite thing that we've done because we can see the difference that we're making. Um, we can see that, you know, we're attracting monarchs at the beginning of the season where there was one day that I went out and I stopped counting at 50 caterpillars, monarch caterpillars. Um, and we watched them cupate, watch them grow, watch them hatch and fly away down to Mexico. They're probably on their way right now. And, um, you know, it's been the most fun that we've had, but um, we're already making plans for what we're going to do next year. Um, there are specific things that I want to do to make sure that we're attracting more than just monarchs, but other types of pollinators. Uh, next slide. Um, the pandemic has given us a challenge. Um, and usually during Earth Day, we'll do a trash cleanup. Um, we do it a couple of times a year. And last um, November, we picked up as a group, we picked up around 200 some pounds, or I'm, I'm sorry, gallons of trash just from around our office from the ground. Um, we can't do that at the moment, obviously. So uh, during, instead of doing Earth Day, we did an Earth Week. And I just challenged everybody from my office to say, hey, you're working from home but do something this week that will have an immediate positive impact on the earth. And um, almost half of our staff replied and told me the things that they're doing, like they picked up trash at their own house or they had a meatless day or they planted their own pollinator plants or herb gardens. Um, some people who were still at the office released ladybugs into our office garden, which was really fun. And then other people are installing bird feeders or feeding the birds or feeding their neighborhood animals from their kitchen scraps. Um, we had a lot of participation in that. And I think that's really important because it shows that people in this office are not just doing the sustainability actions because work is telling them to do it, but because they want to. And it's, it's important to them to do it at home. Next slide. Um, I've, I've, I've convinced both water treatment plants to install their own Monarch waste stations at their facilities. That's gonna start next year. Um, we've already had another area in the city who has um, made their own Monarch waste station because they saw that we did it. So, you know, why can't they? Um, and this year, I really just want to start um, filling in more of the blanks of our scorecard. There are some things that we haven't done that I haven't even considered doing yet, um, but we're finished with all of the low hanging fruits. So we need to um, go higher and do more on the scorecard. Next slide. Um, for me, <clears throat> sorry, for me, the city um, has always had health and wellness initiatives, but they're not really very easy to find. And so the scorecard helps us, it provided a scaffolding so that we can gather all of the information in one place and present it to our employees. Um, and it's been a really great tool to help us gather everything. And um, the KPIs especially are very helpful because they help us make informed decisions, you know, data, is really important, especially to this administration in the city. And so um, it's progress that can be measured, um, you know, sp with specifics instead of just arbitrary things. And the new scorecard with the KPIs has been really helpful with um, helping us achieve our goals. Next slide. Oh, that's it. So thank you, uh, Sustainable Tulsa. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It's a, a pleasure to hear someone who uh, so values attention to the small details. Um, and as we know, uh, small changes can result in, in big results. So congratulations again to all the work you've done, a uh, worthy recipient of this award. Uh, onward, uh, the next recipient is a Creek Nation and uh, the individual here to talk about what they've done is James Williams. And I will tell you, first of all, that 
I worked with James very closely the last couple of years. And he's a really fine gentleman. It's my pleasure to introduce him as a, re as a representative of uh, this organization. James has been with the Muscogee Creek Nation for 27 years and in the environmental office for the last 23. James holds several certifications from the EPA, uh, ODEQ, U.S. Forestry Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. He holds a certified environmental manager certification and certified remediation specialist certification. Serves on many boards and committees, including Tulsa, National Congress of American Indians on Climate Change Technical Committee, EPA Travel Pesticides Executive Committee, uh, Region 6 Regional Tribal Operations Committee, TICO Committee, the Tribal Environmental Coalition in Oklahoma, Muscogee Creek Nation Reservation Commission, Chamber of Commerce Water Committee, and his spare time, I don't think he has very much, serves on the Henrietta School Board. James is married to his lovely wife, Carol, has six kids, nine grandchildren, and one huge dog named Pearl. So here's, here's James. Take it away, James. <laughs> Well, good morning. Uh, good morning, and I'm glad everybody was able to make it today for the Sustainable Tulsa uh, Bellman Awards. Uh, we're super happy uh, that uh, we have uh, been a recipient of the Bellman uh, Award uh, this year. Uh, we've uh, been in the, the scorecard for about three years. Uh, the first uh, two years uh, was kind of a learning experience. That first year, we really didn't know what uh, what we were doing, but uh, we brought on Miss Chris Lawson. Uh, as kind of our sustainability coordinator, and uh, she's uh, been doing really well. We uh, achieved a goal last year, but then this year we're platinum, so uh, we're really extremely uh, pleased uh, with that. Uh, the way the tribe has got behind us and our employees uh, have gotten behind us, and so we're awful uh, pleased uh, with this award, and we couldn't uh, we couldn't do it without the uh, guidance of uh, Miss Corey Williams and Mr. Mike Lemus and the other uh, board members. And uh, uh, we're just uh, fortunate to be a part of it and so glad to uh, be a participant in the scorecard. Muskogee Creek Nation is Sustainable Tulsa's 2020 Bellman Award winner in the medium-sized business category for achievements toward their triple bottom line. People Profit Planet. Through the scorecard, the region's first business sustainability tracking and assessment tool. Here is their story. We do a lot of environmental assessments. Uh, we have a water quality division, solid waste division, recycling division, a little bit of everything uh, that has to do out with the outside, with the uh, soil, uh, land, and the air. So uh, we're excited to do what we can for the tribe and also for its citizens and the sur surrounding communities. Our sustainability journey here at the Muskogee Creek Nation started about 12 years ago, somewhere around there. Since then, it's grown pretty good, and we just uh, like the direction that it's going in. Uh, we actually have a recycled building built now just for our recycling efforts. It's worked out real well. We have uh, some guys that work in the recycled building, and then we have our solid waste division. Uh, we have a water quality uh, division. The sustainability to us here is we're looking for the future. I get the children involved in the educational outreach, to get them involved in recycling trying to get them to conserve a little water. Some of the things that we've done this last year, uh, we've had a couple big recycle events where we invite the uh, tribe and employees and citizens and surrounding communities to come in and take advantage of our recycling. We, we recycle electronics, white goods, appliances, tires. We shred paper. We just, it's an all-day event, and it's, uh, it's been pretty successful here. Installing some uh, EV stations, we're about to get one up and going right now. So our push is to get so many uh, electric charging uh, stations uh, throughout the nation, then also uh, some electric cars in our fleet. We have a couple of them ourselves, but we like to see uh, more of the tribe uh, go that route to reduce their carbon footprint. We partnered with the Reintegration Center and Henry Etta, and also partnered with the Conservation District to uh, grow a bunch of vegetables. We started doing this in February, right in the beginning of COVID. Uh, we didn't realize how important these vegetable plants were going to be. Uh, come April and May, we had three plant giveaways. We also did a few community gardens. Uh, one of them 
at the Reintegration Center in Henrietta, the other one at the Old Mulkey uh, Nutrition Center. Well, our sustainability, uh, how we incorporate them in our annual goals is uh, we look and see where we're at. Uh, we look and see where uh, we can expand our uh, programs or uh, the growth of the program, or if we need to sink a little more time in them, even in the outreach uh, part of it to see how many, uh, see our base that we're touching. Uh, if we're touching the schools, uh, if we're touching the elderly, uh, we can't forget about our elderly and also our employees here. Uh, we'll have uh, some different classes. Uh, we had a composting uh, class last year. We brought in some master gardeners uh, last year. We're trying to grow just a little bit every year uh, to, uh, like I say, expand our environmental uh, sustainability programs. The chief and second chief will always show up and uh, give us uh, their moral support. Uh, our endeavors that we take here are also supported by the administration and the council, so we feel fortunate to have them along with us along our sustainable journey uh, for the tribe. Well, the scorecard is really interesting and in the fact that it helps us to track our progress on sustainability. They have key performance indicator, uh, KPI points. It helps you to see where you're at, help benchmark you the first year, and then that second year that you're a part of Scorecard, you're really able to advance and see where you started from and see where you went. The Skokie Creek Nation is honored to win the Henry S. Bellman Award. We will continue to educate people about the importance of sustainability and continue to work on making a positive impact on the environment. Well, thank, thank you so much for that. Uh, our next slide is our uh, Muscogee Creek Nation, our, our tribal jurisdiction uh, slash uh, reservation. Uh, we, are, uh, we include 11 counties with the fourth largest tribe, 86,100 citizens. Our executive branch consists of our principal chief, Mr. David Hill, and our second chief, uh, Mr. Uh, Dale Beaver. And also we're under the direction of the Secretary of Interior, who is Mr. Jesse Allen. And if we can have the next slide. Some of our environmental services goals here uh, is to provide an effective environmental management uh, to the Creek Nation and also tribal members uh, may live in a confident and, and safe and healthy environment. Uh, we do a variety of things. Uh, I look at that picture of the water there and man, it just looks so pristine. I remember when I was out in the field and got to go out there like that and I kind of miss those days, but uh, it's good. It's a picture of our electric car. One of our events where we had uh, our Creek Nation Festival, there's a recycling event down there. And then our educational outreach is, uh, is one of our uh, feathers in our cap that we like to uh, say that we're doing a pretty good job on that. Those kids are good. we got to start them young, uh, get that culture in them uh, where they can start recycling, save a little energy, uh, and then uh, uh, they'll take that as they uh, grow a little older. Uh, next slide, please. Here's some of our scorecard successes. Man, it's been great, uh, even in the pandemic. Uh, we had some folks that got together and made masks uh, for our citizens. Uh, we actually had a food giveaway. There's chief and second chief there. Uh, there's some of the boxes that we made. We know that the elderly, uh, and I have this problem too, uh, about bending over. So we raised up the flower beds and the garden beds where they could do it just waist high. We thought that was really a big impact. Uh, we do touch base uh, with some Monarch uh, way stations. Uh, and there's some plant giveaways there. And then there's a greenhouse again. Um, like I say, it's it's been pretty good. Uh, Chris was talking about the KPIs. Uh, I have that on my desk. What's your KPI today? Uh, you know, your key performance indicators of the day. So uh, we're looking, uh, we're always looking to uh, to see what we can do a little better. And the kids outreach, oh, it's amazing. Miss um, Jennifer Ryer and Miss Chris uh, do, a, do a good job uh, getting out there with the kids. Uh, next slide, please. Here's some of our projects we got going in the top uh, corner right there. We have an air station that's on loan from the Cherokee Nation, and we're doing some uh, air air monitoring just south of Glenpool. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, butterflies and the milkweed. There's our electric charging station going in. Uh, we're after uh, uh, some uh, uh, solid waste sites that we collect up, and, and toward the bottom is the new uh, 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 the uh, where we're putting out a, um, a meat packing plant just south of uh, the Duck Creek Casino. And that's the uh, the dirt turn in there uh, 
first shovel uh, turn. And we're real happy about that going in. And we're real pleased uh, about the progress that we're that we're making here at the Muscogee Creek Nation and in, uh, with our citizens and our employees. Employees, we couldn't do anything without them. Uh, we get some good volunteer hours with the employees, and we can't thank them enough, but we can't thank uh, Chief and Second Chief enough and our boss, Jesse Allen, for jumping on board with our sustainability environmental endeavors. Uh, next slide, please. We have two really big uh, recycle events. One's on Earth Day. Uh, the other ones for National Recycle Day or America Recycles Day. Our next event is actually tomorrow. Uh, we're kind of gearing up for that uh, so we can uh, collect a bunch of e-waste, uh, tires, batteries, white goods, cardboard, plastics, ones and two, aluminum, shred truck will be on site to have a secure shred. Those are really big events. Uh, we had one back in July. We had to postpone the one on Earth Day, so we backed it up to July. And, of course, that would be just a super hot day, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, Chief, Second Chief came out, had a good crowd. Uh, those are those are good days. Uh, those are good days. Those are hard, hard, long days, but those are good days. Uh, if you can uh, advance the slide one more time. This is our group. This is part of our environmental group. Uh, these guys will do about anything uh, that we need to get done. Uh, we have some carpenters in there. We've got uh, some water quality specialists. We've got a little bit of everything in there. And uh, this is a, a great bunch. This isn't all of them, but this was the ones that were around that day to have a picture. And uh, we just thank you so much for letting us be an opportunity to be a part of the Sustainable Tulsa and also the scorecard, which I think is great. Um, uh, it, uh, it, it actually gets, uh, gets you where you need to be as far as uh, with your company and your employees and, and the environment, uh, energy. Uh, those four cornerstones are real good. And I, I encourage anybody that uh, it's not a part of the scorecard to, to get involved. Uh, there's some great help, some great coaches. And uh, we're just glad to uh, uh, be a part of it. And we're happy to accept the Bellman Award on behalf of the Muscogee Creek Nation. And I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone uh, that participates in the scorecard. And we're looking forward to another year uh, to see where we can improve and grow also. And uh, just uh, we just uh, uh, we want to encourage people to take advantage of the scorecard. Uh, I thank you so much. And I will yield my time. <laughs> Thank you, James. Uh, very exciting things going on at the Creek Nation. We're so proud of uh, what you and your organization have done. Our next Bellman recipient is Aon. And here to represent Aon is Stephanie Cameron. Stephanie serves as the Community Relations Administrator at Aon. Prior to this role, she held positions as Community Affairs Director at APSCO Manufacturing corporate market director for the American Heart Association and previously worked as a recruiter in industrial staffing. She has a BA in international affairs from the University of Georgia and serves various nonprofits and organizations locally and nationally, including the Manufacturing Institute, the State Chamber of Oklahoma, Leadership Oklahoma, Residence Center for Women, the St. Tulsa, the Leadership Exchange Academy, the Rotary Club of Tulsa, the Oklahoma Academy, the Tulsa Regional Chamber, Girl Scouts of Eastern Oklahoma, the Tulsa Area Manufacturers Association, and the regional, Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance. Recently, she was appointed as a gubernatorial uh, choice to the Governor's Council on Workforce and Economic Development. And Stephanie is not just a leader in sustainability in our state, she's also a leader, flat out, period, full stop. And let me give you some evidence for that. She was named as one of the 2020 Oklahoma Women in STEM, the 2019 Goodwill Tulsa Works Hero winner, the YMCA's 2017 Woman of the Year, the Journal Records 2017 Woman of the Year, Oklahoma Magazine's 2017 40 and under, under 40, uh, the Journal Records 2016 Woman of the Year, Tulsa World's People to Watch in 2016, a 2016 Journal Record Achiever Under 40, a 2015 National Women in Manufacturing Step Ahead Award winner, 2015 Woman of Distinction, Tulsa Business and Legal News 2014, 40 and Under 40, uh, has received awards for Outstanding Achievement in Fundraising and is a member of the Leadership Oklahoma Class of this year and Leadership Tulsa Class 50. Turn it over to Stephanie. Congratulations. 
Thank you for that introduction, Mike, and I think we're going to turn to the video. Aon is Sustainable Tulsa's 2020 Bellman Award winner in the large business category for achievements toward their triple bottom line, People, Profit, Planet. Through the scorecard, the region's first sustainability tracking and assessment tool, here is their story. Aon is an essential business supporting our nation's critical infrastructure. As a manufacturer, we had a unique opportunity to respond during the COVID-19 pandemic. We were able to manufacture over 240 units for both permanent and temporary hospitals in the Northeast. We've also been able to manufacture units to support COVID-19 swab manufacturing facilities. This really provided a purpose and a mission for our team. And I think this shows resilience that our community and our businesses can offer. We've seen so much value participating in the Sustainable Tulsa Scorecard program. This has really been a rallying point for us and a reason for us to work in a more cross-functional manner instead of in silos. Having to gather this data from different departments and then for it to be a focal point across the company and something that's recognizable within the company. The scorecard has provided opportunities for us to have discussions that we might not have had otherwise. You know, there are elements in there that maybe we hadn't considered before, or maybe this is something we should think about differently or something that we can do better. It's definitely helped us in developing goals moving forward. I think receiving the Bellman Award is, you know, just a crown jewel on top of our journey. I think we appreciate participating in something that we know we're measuring and we can show an impact. If more companies in the area were participating, we could definitely move the needle on sustainability in our community and across the state. Okay, um, to share a little bit more about Aon and our sustainability journey, um, we're gonna move to the next slide. So for anyone who is not familiar with our company, we were founded in 1988 here in Tulsa. Um, we are a manufacturer of commercial HVAC products. We are publicly traded on NASDAQ and we have about 2,500 team members in three locations between Tulsa, Parkville, Missouri, and Long Beach, Texas. And we can move to the next slide. And to share some of our sustainability initiatives, um, as mentioned in the video, we do have a cross-functional committee, and I know Eric Taylor from our team is on uh, the call this morning. Um, this has really helped us share information, and as we mentioned in the video, not work in silos. Um, I think we have used these cornerstones from the scorecard, which are listed below, um, and really use those as our ways to improve. Um, I would say we've done much better in our communications and promotions. We offer um, almost bi-monthly educational opportunities related to sustainability. Um, and then our team members are seeing each month in our newsletter information about sustainability. And so it's just becoming more woven into our culture as a company. Um, we have been able to utilize our community stewardship activities and then be able to kind of cross over into sustainability opportunities or community resilience opportunities. And so when we think about repurposing things, can it serve one of our nonprofit partners? So like if we have extra wire around our facility, you know, someone, we actually had a team member suggest, you know, hey, Fab Lab might be able to use this. So when we are connecting our team members with different nonprofits in the community, we can also, um, can join that with our sustainability initiatives. And so we're all thinking in those terms or when our safety manager suggests, hey, could we do a cleanup event? And so that's the picture that you see on the slide there. Um, and then, so I think our departments within the company are now getting used to being asked the questions and why they're being asked those questions. So if I'm reaching out to our accounting team um, to ask something related to our utility bills, things like that, then they're used to it. Um, that healthy work environment. I think we've done um, quite a bit in terms of our material management. And so last year we were able to convert 520 tons to energy with our partnership with Covanta. We also recycled over 9,852 tons. Um, and so from these numbers that we're collecting, we're able to see how we're doing each year and also um, being aware of our energy usage intensity on our buildings, 
Um, I think the scorecard has definitely allowed us to no, no, no. in that. And we've actually been able to share a um, sustainability report. We're about to publish our second sustainability report. Um, and then also looking at our water usage and what we're doing in the future with that. So we can move to the next slide. And this year, which also spans going into next year, we are doing over $70 million in capital investments. Um, we have placed new HVAC systems on our buildings. And so that's the picture that you see there to the right. Um, we're gonna be continuing to upgrade our lighting within our buildings. We're modifying our door systems, um, which definitely affects you know, what our internal temperatures are. And then working on some beautification projects. Um, looking at increasing our renewable energy usage within our mix. Um, and this was actually our first time gathering our carbon footprint information, which was prompted by the scorecard. Um, just, we work with THG to be able to gather that data. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's really increased interdepartmental communication. And this does a, a, some great things for our company internally. And we can move to the next slide. As we shared, um, and as Sustainable Tulsa had suggested to share how the pandemic has affected us, um, we really had the opportunity to respond to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, we have manufactured over 248 units for 70 different projects in 28 different states and provinces. Um, and we continue to take on those projects. With our internal team related to our sustainability committee, we, as as we are today, um, we have gone virtual and it, it comes with its pluses and minuses. You know, we've been able to host like the Nature Conservancy to share information with us, but it's all virtual now. Um, and, you know, just we're getting used to those forms of communication and engagement. And so we can move to the next slide. And then looking forward and for our industry overall, um, Electrification is part of the conversation. You know, as as the um, projects are moving in that direction, is that um, an opportunity for HVAC systems? Could that be done? And then max tech, meaning we are pushing the capabilities of the technology that we have right now. Well, we will need to create new technologies um, to be able to improve efficiency overall in uh, HVAC systems. Also consider, considering integrated building designs and what that could look like. And that ties into the internet of things. Um, you know, how can we continue to improve efficiencies in building operations? And then also um, looking at new refrigerants. So those are consistently being reimagined and there is definitely room for new creativity and invention there. And then as far as our internal plans, you know, as we mentioned before, it's increasing our renewable energy usage, um, beautification projects around our facilities and what that looks like moving forward. So we, we are very hopeful um, and very pleased to be receiving this recognition. Um, you'll see there um, one of our maintenance engineers with uh, one of our separation um, vessels there to separate some of our recycling materials. And so that's just part of what we're doing moving forward. And uh, we are so honored to be among this list. Congratulations, uh, Aon. Congratulations, Stephanie. And very impressed with your uh, COVID response and uh, best wish you some continue good work. Uh, onward, um, our next organization to be honored is Spirit Aero Systems. And here to represent Spirit is Richard Cox. Richard was appointed site leader over facilities, maintenance, tooling, security, and EH&S for Oklahoma operations in March 2016, before assuming leadership of facilities, maintenance, tooling, security, and EH&S for Oklahoma operations. Richard served as manager of facilities, maintenance, and tool cribs at Spirit Tulsa. Richard joined Spirit Aerosystems in 20, December of 2006 as facilities project administrator. In his role, Richard was instrumental in activating the Boeing 787 and Gulfstream programs. 
Previously, Richard served as Executive VP of Portfolio Management at Franklin Collection Service. In these roles, he provided executive leadership for six multi-state and international sites. Prior to joining Franklin in 2003, Richard served as General Manager of National Accounts Systems and Commercial Financial Services in Oklahoma. Richard is the Executive Leader for the American Heart Association, Heart Walk and Sustainability for Operations in Oklahoma. He serves as Vice President for the Spirit Employees Association. Richard earned a BA degree in Aviation Management from OSU, has a Master's degree in Business Administration from Southern Nazarene. He also holds an AP license and I know Richard has two ball playing boys and he's always involved with their uh, games and their lives. So I turn it over to Richard and congratulations. Spirit Aero Systems is Sustainable Tulsa's 2020 overall Bellman Award winner for achievements toward their triple bottom line, People, Profit, Planet, through the scorecard, the region's first business sustainability tracking and assessment tool. Here is their story. Spirit partnered with Sustainable Tulsa to become a scorecard member in 2017. We saw the program's value not just for Spirit's people and bottom line, but for the community in which we work and live. It also aligned perfectly with Spirit's core values, which was important to us. We dedicated a team to our sustainable efforts and built their goals into our strategic plan. Our accomplishments have occurred across multiple areas, including energy usage, community partnerships, and waste management. We are already at discussing how we could take the program to the next level in the next year. Sustainability has truly changed the way we think about our environment and our impact on it. Spirit chose to participate in the scorecard because the format helped us identify projects that could be implemented immediately to help capture cost savings and process improvements throughout the plan. It has proven to be in a tremendous program in developing future leaders, strengthening team relationships, and identifying strategic partners in the community. It really is so much more than we understood when we first got involved. Our team really embraced the idea of the triple bottom line, a program that could have a meaningful impact on people, profit, and planet. Too often we think of these as competing priorities, but Sustainable Tulsa gave us a framework to impact all three. I would say the initiatives that have generated the most excitement are those that involve everyone, our employees, and our partners in the community. Reducing energy consumption is great for profit and planet, but getting people excited to plant flowers, helping service agencies, and mentoring and developing tomorrow's leaders was fundamental, and Scorecard gave us a way to do that. Just a couple of examples are creating a monarch habitat at our Tulsa site and the Tulsa Met School. Another was teaming up with a vendor to clean up the front of East Central High School by installing a power-coded EC logo, trimming of a garden area, and planting red crepe myrtle trees to line the entrance of the school. I think we were all very surprised at how quickly our employees got involved and added their input. They work really hard all day, and these are difficult times. And seeing them go above and beyond in their free time and doing so with such enthusiasm is very rewarding. Winning the Henry Bellman Award is a great honor for us. We know the work of the other companies who are involved with Sustainable Tulsa, and we are thrilled to be recognized as a leader among them. The award builds recognition not only for Spirit Aero Systems, but for the work of our sustainability team has been doing since 2017. Team members appreciate being recognized for their hard work, and it makes them want to keep participating and enroll others in their efforts. We also believe that the program and awards like this are attractive to potential business partners. So it certainly can help in our desire to win new work and grow our workforce in this community. Finally, now more than ever, employees are looking for positive changes and visions to rally behind. The right sustainability goals can provide that motivation while advancing Spirit's core values of transparency, collaboration, inspiration and inspiration. Spirit has a dedicated budget for sustainability projects. Once the steering team has identified the projects for the quarter or year, a project manager is assigned to each one. We manage our sustainability projects like we do any other business initiative. We report out progress regularly to the executive leadership team and show the impact and ROI through facts and data. We even look at engagement measures by tracking the number of employees who volunteer and the number of hours that they dedicate. The only thing that we haven't figured out yet is how to measure the good feeling that comes from doing good work. All right. Thank you. Um, and piggybacking uh, on what Stacy had said is, you know, it does take a commitment from our leadership team to make our sustainable program um, very, you know, effective and efficient uh, here. And Bill Brown started it back in 2017 as our executive leader 
um, here in Tulsa that got the sustainable program off ground. If you go to the next slide. <laughs> a little airplane action for you. Um, so this is just some of the projects that we've done. In 2020, one of the big wins uh, we had been battling for a long time was, what do we do with all this wood that's coming in from all over the world uh, with airplane parts coming in to Tulsa? Uh, we take the parts out and then what do we do with the wood? There for a while we would you know, let the employees take it. They would take only a percentage of it. And then we were just crushing it up and it was going to the landfill. So we, through Sustainable Tulsa, we were able to partner with EcoWood this past year, and they have been a great partner for us, for us to have a place to send this wood to. So now we crush it up, put it in their dumpsters, and it is off to be recycled. So a big win for uh, Spirit Tulsa this year was been the, the wood recycling. And we also continue to invest in LED lighting. This year we did the central campus, which was uh, – about a million dollars worth of upgrades for our LED programs. We also did the Monarch Habitats, not only here at Spirit, but also you saw at the Met. Um, stormwater discharge signage there again, just making sure that people are aware of what goes down the drain and, and where it ends up. Um, the Aladine Pit, I'll explain a little more of that here shortly. Uh, we also wanted to get out and start recycling in our Market Fresh um, break areas. Uh, so we started going with some signage and some containers and it's really taken off. Now we're going to progress out into the manufacturing space. So big win there. Uh, the mon mon uh, monitoring system and the train tracer are also are systems that allow us for energy management to maintain these equipment and also, uh, you know, when people aren't there, they don't, uh, the machines don't run. So it helps us keep the energy cost down and reduce the waste. The iLert, same thing on our pumps. Uh, we partnered with uh, Vanco on that and, and it's been a great source of, of helping us only run pumps that are needed on a lead lag system. So it's helped us with our energy costs. Uh, power metering, there again, you know, trying to keep the peak, uh, the peaks down on the energy. Uh, that's helped us with our cost savings. Uh, this year, we also did the EV parking and charging stations. Uh, we've also done some water usage, how we've uh, went and found through these systems that we had some major leaks uh, that were going right into the, the, um, to the sewer that we had to fix. So we went and replaced the valves and, and we've saved millions of gallons of water just by going and being able to monitor the discharge of these. Um, and then we also partnered with Imperial on the fresh food options in our market fresh. Uh, you know, healthy spirit definitely is our, our is our forte. So that's what we're for. And then you'll see into some slides here shortly is the real key to this thing is the volunteer hours that we're able to give back to the community uh, and help everyone with the triple bottom line. So if you go to the next slide. Uh, we've teamed up with uh, Grouse Green Barn to do our uh, over at our Horseshoe in Center Island to do. We were ready for some landscaping upgrades anyway, so we decided that hey, well, what a better time to go and build the Monarch Way Station over there for us to um, to help you know the community and and we are starting to see the monarchs out here at the airport, so it's it's awesome. So and you'll see here in 2021, our plan is to put another one up on our North Campus. So um, it's definitely a win-win there. So next slide. And then here's East Central uh, cleanup. You know, we partnered with East Central to um, go make the school look better. I mean, if you looked at it from the outside, uh, we met with their leadership there and, and they were like, well, you know, what's really motivating for them to come there? What, I mean, how can they take some pride? So we partnered with them to go clean up the school uh, we, like I said, we, and Stacy mentioned in the video, we powder coated a, a East Central symbol for them and, and, and they helped us plant some trees, as you can see there, to help. And we did a couple flower beds for them. So it was definitely a win and a great opportunity. And it also builds camaraderie with not only our employees, but also, you know, the generations to come of helping. So next slide. There's more of it there again, like I said, just, you know, out and, and helping the environment. Next slide. 
And then we also uh, help the Tulsa Met, you know, with their monarch wayfage or monarch habitat uh, and cleaning up the site. Uh, you can see there we partnered with Texoma Tractor. Uh, they donated the equipment and their time to come out and partner with Spirit and the Met to help, uh, you know, build this habitat for the, the kids. If you'll go to the next slide. We also were able to take some uh, storm damaged trees and hollow them out for flower beds uh, so the kids will be able to plant their, their plants in there as part of their, their, their schooling. And then we also had some of them as, you know, uh, places to sit and enjoy it once they get their uh, habitat put together. Okay. And then the alodyne process is a wastewater. So what we were doing before was we would, uh, we use this alodyne to wash off the, the airplane parts before they go to paint. And what was happening is, is we'd capture it. You see the great system there. We'd capture the water and the chromium down into that pit. We'd pump it out into a tote, and then we would take it off site and discharge of it. So what we did was, hey, it was a lot of waste, leaving spirit. We said, hey, what can we do to keep the chromium here? So we installed this filtration system through Avoqua that allows us to uh, pull every bit of the chromium out of the water so that we can put the water down into uh, the local sewer, uh, sanitary sewer, and then we can take those cartridges that has the chromium in them, and then we ship those back and get them replaced, and they 100% recycle the chromium. So there again, just another win for us uh, that eliminated a main waste stream here at Spirit. Next slide. And then just kind of a look ahead, uh, as we all know, with the pandemic and the aerospace industry is, is down now, is, is an opportunity for us to, you know, hone in and develop uh, exactly where we want to improve. And most of the projects, uh, first of all, our ELT, our leadership team is definitely committed to continuing our sustainability effort in our projects. So we are able to do it. So this year we're going to do the South Campus LED lightings there again. It's a little over a million dollars. Uh, we should be completing that in J uh, January or February. Uh, like I said earlier, we're gonna do another Monarch uh, Habitat and tree. Uh, we're gonna do some more recycled bins and place them out in there. Uh, we continue to uh, improve, our, yeah, improve our HVAC systems, uh, some more eye alerts on our pumps. We're just continuing to grow more of the parking, the water loses. And then as Stephanie had mentioned earlier, and due to the scorecard with Sustainable Coal, so we are looking at, you know, what our carbon footprint is and how do we find ways to reduce that. Um, we also have begun using wind power as our electric. Uh, we've converted uh, two of our major accounts and we continue to go down and, and convert those. Um, also, we, we saw the wood and the Eco Wood partnership has been great. Uh, but what we're looking at is how do we eliminate the wood for coming here? Is there some opportunities for rotables? And what we call rotables is, is you put it in a fixture, ship it to us, and we ship the empty one back to you. And then we just keep that cycle going instead of having to dispose of the wood on each one of them. So we're pushing those sustainable practices back into our supply base. Um, and then we'll continue the volunteer hours. I know with the pandemic, that's uh, been uh, very hard to do. But we did, we were able just last month to adopt a stream uh, with the city of Tulsa. And we did a, a COVID uh, prevented a measure, kept social distance, but still had an opportunity to go clean a couple creeks here in town. So we're gonna continue to push the sustainable efforts in our volunteering. And then as you see, the big leap there was, we're gonna commit to being zero landfill by 2026. And that's definitely gonna take some partnerships. Uh, we have developed a lot of, of partnerships, you know, Eco Wood, Covanta, Texoma Tractor, Magnum Electric, Banco, Imperial Vending, and Train, and Garage Green Barn have all been great, outstanding partners, uh, but we couldn't have done none of this without Sustainable Tulsa, and we would truly appreciate it. So I would like to thank everybody for the honor of the Henry Bellman Award. We'd also, uh, it is great company to be with these great other companies uh, leading the way in sustainability. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, and uh, thank you, Aon, uh, thank you, Spirit uh, Aerosystems, for everything you're doing in our community, a great community partner. Um, okay, so we now we have a poll that we're going to administer. 
Um, like you can't you can't get off a Zoom meeting without completing a poll. Here you go. Mike, uh, we're yeah. waiting for that poll to be uh, completed again. Just congratulations to all of our winners. Just I'm you know listening to some of their goals for 2021 and the things that they've accomplished, especially in 20. 20 is just really inspiring and a reminder we have such great sustainability leaders here in Tulsa and Oklahoma and uh, just congratulations to all of our Bellman winners today. Uh, uh, great, thank you. Thank you, Corey. Um, why don't you, if you would take a minute, if you have a question you'd like to ask of the panel or individual members of the, of the panel, please take a moment to do that and pass those questions along to uh, Teresa Kerrigan in the, in the chat and she'll get them to me. In the meantime, I do have a few questions. Questions I'd like to pose to the to the group right now. Um, so let's go ahead and get that started. So um, I think some of you may have alluded to this, but maybe if you want to expand on um, your biggest challenges during the pandemic, um, you know, we can we can all learn from each other and how to respond to these times of crisis. So why don't we just kind of go one by one? Uh, and kind of give a response to the uh, challenges posed by the pandemic and how you met them. So why don't we start with, uh, let me start with Graham, please. All right, yes. Um, well, you, you might see the poll uh, in front of you too. Uh, I'll go ahead and say how great we have uh, people. I'll speak on behalf of Corey, but we there are obviously people that still need to join the scorecard. So. I hope everybody gets on it. Um, but it, as far as the pandemic, oh my gosh, um, I don't think we're unique with anybody else, but boy was it, uh, and still is, but especially at the start, it was so disruptive uh, to operations and we were changing like everybody else day by day. And, it, and it, what we did the first day was outdated by the time the second day came along. So we had to shut down our recycling centers for about a month or a little over a month. And, uh, um, and we couldn't risk the workers, especially uh, before we knew kind of what, how we could operate. And uh, then by May uh, 1st, we were uh, almost fully operational again. And we had to just uh, change our operations and figure out how to do it safely. Um, keeping people safe, obviously, is the most important thing. And, uh, and then our education was incredibly disrupted, especially in the schools. It was just devastating, uh, especially last spring. But um, luckily, uh, Allie was able to figure out ways to get out there um, in a variety of ways, some in-person distance uh, learning, and then some a lot virtually. So um, it just took uh, a lot of uh, ingenuity. And uh, luckily, I have staff that, that can do that. That's my answer to that. Great. Thank you, Graham. Um, Sheila, you have a response for us on the challenges of working in a pandemic? Yeah, well, obviously we, we can't meet in person as much as we used to. Um, a lot of things that we were doing, like, um, you know, we would use reusable towels sometimes instead of paper towels. We had to take that kind of stuff away. Um, when we were composting, I used to take the buckets of compost back to my own house to do it, and um, I couldn't do that anymore. So, you know, we're we're working on things that we can ways to get around that. Um, you know, and it, everybody's going to have challenges. It's not unique to the pandemic. There's challenges all the time, everywhere. But you just do what you can do every day. Um, work around those and do the best that you can. Great. Thank you. James, uh, how about uh, the Creek Nation? What, what were your challenges? Well, uh, obviously it was uh, uh, worker safety first. Uh, we had uh, reduced our staff to half staff at one time. Um, we were always worried about contamination, about uh, uh, the contamination factor of our items that we're recycling. Uh, and then how efficiently were we going to be able to continue? Uh, we had offices start placing uh, their recyclables in a central area. So we'd have, we didn't have to go into the offices or buildings and uh, we had to put some bins out. So they offices, different offices could place their recycle items in there. And uh, so my guys wouldn't have to uh, traipse all over the buildings uh, uh, looking for that. 
And also we were looking for some improved markets. Um, the markets weren't real good at that time. So we were having to hold a lot of our recyclables uh, to, a, to a point where uh, we finally had to uh, start selling some off. So, uh, but yeah, it, it was tough. Uh, but worker safety was our main factor because without our workers, you know, we can't uh, get a whole lot done. And the contamination uh, factor, uh, how we how we do things more efficiently and uh, the improved markets. But uh, it's coming back a little. But uh, right now we're still on a, on a 50 percent work staff uh, at one time. So we're still rotating our, our shifts around, but uh, we're, 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 we're making it work. So uh, it has been some challenging times uh, during this pandemic, something that, uh, you know, we didn't foresee or predict. So uh, sometimes you got to change on the fly. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you, James. Uh, Stephanie, response at Aon. Yeah, so you heard a little bit about what our production team was working on and our engineering team in response um, to COVID. I think we also saw an impact in some of our employee volunteerism, some of the fun things that people look forward to. We had to, you know, say, okay, it's not going to happen this time around, or it may look virtual this time. Um, and still looking for some of those opportunities for our team members to engage. Um, I'll also note, like, we provide a lot of food at Aon, and so we've had to move towards individual box lunches, but I'm glad to see a lot of times we are using um, a caterer who is putting them in compostable boxes. Um, so just being mindful of like, what, what does this individualism create? And then how are we, you know, disposing of it um, responsibly? And so it, it creates some interesting new um, things to face. <laughs> right. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Richard, any response from uh, Spirit Arrow Systems? You bet. Uh some of the main challenges is just the capital investment that we need to improve the energy efficiencies and the, and the waste. Um, you know, just keeping that commitment with the downturn and everything, it's, it, it has been a challenge, but we just gotta make sure that it's the right projects. It, it also allows us an opportunity to do our homework, right? Go do research, go figure out what is the next wave and what is the next thing. So um, it has been a challenge there again, just as Stephanie mentioned, um, the team events is really what, what gets everybody going and gets that camaraderie. And, and it's been a challenge right now, but, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are, we were able to do that with the doctor stream. So it is a challenge, but it can be done. We just got to learn to how to safely do it uh, to what James says, obviously our employee safety is, is number one. So we need to make sure that's in account, but then also continue to press forward with our mission. Great. Thank you, Richard. Uh, I have another question for the, uh, for the panel. Um, so maybe there's some companies uh, represented here today who are thinking about getting started sustainability. And uh, how, how, do you have any recommendations for them as they, as they start on their, their sustainable journey? Let's uh, maybe go through the panel one more time. Uh, Graham, any thoughts? Yeah, well, the obvious one is to, is to get in, in the scorecard. Um, without that, you're, you're going to be uh, probably disorganized and uh, not accomplish near as much. Uh, and then once you make that step, that commitment um, is to get a team and get those cornerstones knocked out. And hopefully you'll have a great coach like we did. And, and that'll be helpful. So really, I don't want to belabor that, but but that's those are the obvious ones that came to my mind. Great, thank you. Uh, Sheila, any thoughts? Um, yeah, you know, starting is the hardest part. Once you get started, um, then, you know, go for the low hanging fruit. There's stuff that you're probably already doing. If you're already thinking about being in the scorecard, you're probably already doing some stuff. So, you know, take advantage of that, put it in there. Um, and then just work your way up. There's, you know, however many points there are, you, you just go through them one by one and see, is that something you can do? And you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to do it all perfectly, but just starting and doing everything one by one and building on, on, you, building on what you've done um, will make an improvement. Right, thank you. James? Uh, yes. 
So the main thing is uh, uh, just get to the point where you want to measure what you do in all aspects. Um, start with your employees. You got to get buy-in for your employees, what you're trying to do. Uh, we usually like to get the administration on board, uh, notify them what we're trying to do. And uh, then the process, uh, you just build on it. Uh, you're not going to uh, build a bridge in one day. Uh, so you just kind of uh, take uh, your baby steps, uh, uh, like she was saying, the low-hanging fruit first, and then just kind of grow, uh, whether it's be lighting, recycling, uh, employee involvement, community involvement, uh, and just uh, keep keep working your way at it, and you will get better. Uh, just your employees will help you get better. So that's our goal, uh, is always to get better. So uh, uh, those are just some small steps. Of course, uh, the scorecard is what – Put you over the top. Yeah, the scorecard will, will put you in the right direction. It's the four cornerstones. And uh, man, I tell you what, it'll open your eye uh, about uh, how you can improve and uh, and see some uh, see some of your uh, labors of your fruit later on. Great. Thank you, James. Thank you. Stephanie? Yeah, I would echo what the other panelists have said, but also don't be too hard on yourself and start where you are. Um, I think sustainability has a wider lens than most people think of to start out with. It's more than just your energy usage, your material management. You know, it is things like I loved here in the city of Tulsa and like encouraging more people to have plants in their offices um, because that does, you know, factor into indoor air quality. And I mean, I think the scorecard provides that template just to be able to look at those little boxes that you can check off and continue to improve along your journey. Richard, thoughts? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I agree with the team. Uh, it, it starts. It started with us. Our journey started with scorecard, right? Uh, we needed a path, um, you know, and it allowed us to develop some partnerships. That's the other thing is, you know, don't feel like you have to go alone on this. Uh, there's partners in our community that will partner with you and and help you get to where you need to be. So, and you know, I echo what Jan, the whole panel said is. It's a journey. I mean, it's it's not, uh, you know, you're going to flip a switch one day and you're going to be sustainable. I mean, it takes one step at a time. It's a journey. Be patient with it and do something. And then the last thing is something that we're still struggling with, but I, I imagine all of the companies are, is you can't celebrate the wins enough, right? We, we, we're trying to learn how, how do we celebrate these wins and build that culture of sustainability in the company? So that's our challenge. Thank you all so much for that response. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. Another, uh, another poll. So if you take a minute to respond here. Yes, we're gearing up for 2021. And so we just want to hear from you guys what you're interested in learning about uh, in 2021. Thank you, Megan. Are you going to present the results before I go on? Yes, we, we can definitely do that. And just, you know, these were um, selected based on uh, a review of our scorecard and what are some of the trends that are happening nationally and globally, uh, topics that um, we're seeing companies address or are looking into. So that's how these uh, topics were picked uh, this time. But, you know, just hearing uh, some of the things that were shared by our panelists, um, it you know, we continue to see these um, activities showing up. Uh, and I saw that Chad Burden commented on uh, spirits uh, recycling of the water and, and pulling out cadmium and such an incredible project of how to look at that circularity and opportunities there. So more creative projects like that. I think we need to uh, see those examples and, and uh, see if we can implement more of those in the Tulsa area, because that's really the way we're going to really reduce our impact uh, reduce pollution, but also save money uh, by saving those resources. So again, Richard, congratulations to you on that amazing project there. Um, and congratulations, Corey and staff for trying to keep the uh, scorecard updated and relevant and reflective of current trends. Uh, we, we have to do it in order to retain our, our scorecard members and keep them motivated and engaged. So uh, congrats on, on your real fine work in that area. Well, well, thank you. And, you know, it's really the KPIs that have, uh, you know, continued 
to be a driver of uh, new opportunities, but um, also um, really excited to have Teresa learning, you know, she's right now getting organized in the, in the tool and, and familiar with it. And, and that's why we'll launch next week, uh, reopening it with a few of these uh, changes. So um, yeah, we're excited to have Teresa on the team. It's going to make a great difference on uh, how our 2021 results. So uh, as you see there, uh, what you're uh, looking into here, what you're interested in. So this is really great to, to see. It looks like they're all of interest, but uh, in particular climate action and ESG materiality um, kind of taking the lead there. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm gonna uh, make sure we have a picture of that and I think we'll get the results too. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, so um, I have another question here um, for each panel member. Uh, talking about sustainability trends in 2021 and beyond uh, for your particular industry or entity. So for, uh, for Graham, um, I know you're out of the biz now, but uh, what do you see as a, as a trend, upcoming trend for recycling? Wow. Um, yeah, recycling is a uh, always changing business. And uh, as James was talking about, it can be pretty rocky. Um, in my five year tenure, um, I, I'm afraid we went from bad to worse. And uh, then we started to look a little better and then the pandemic hit and we went even worse than we ever could imagine. So, <laughs> um, so we, we see, um, you know, the hope, I'm not uh, privy to all the prog uh, prognosticators uh, uh, ideas, but uh, we see commodities hopefully being worth more, which will help our, our uh, bottom line. Um, and motivate us some more. So that hopefully will help. Um, then, then there's, you know, what's the next thing that we really need to handle more uh, appropriately and uh, perhaps recycle that's not being recycled. I don't know that I have the answer to that. Luckily, uh, we've got a new guy, uh, Bobby Schultz. I think he's on the call and he's our new director and, and he'll uh, get with those newest things. And, uh, and then for us, it, this will be a never uh, ending thing is education. That's what we're all about. So we have to educate. And, and that's really the, the three things I think of. Great. Thanks, Graham. Uh, Sheila, how about from the city standpoint? Uh, are you working with any, uh, any of your counterparts and other municipalities to, uh, you know, to, to enlighten them or to get them engaged? Uh, what, what do you see? What do you see in your arena from a city perspective? Yeah, some of our groups um, work directly with industries and they're talking about, you know, all of the industrial pretreatment stuff like like Richard was talking about with their cadmium, um, getting them to improve the waste stream coming out of the industries going into the sanitary sewer. Um, you know, we're talking to people about uh, best management practices for their restaurants or their dentist office or whatever to um, make sure that they're not harming our waste systems. And, you know, we're going around and uh, partners for a clean environment where we're involved with that, trying to get everybody to um, do what they need to do. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, James, um, what about your your, your, your tribal counterparts, uh, your colleagues uh, representing other tribes are, where are they at? Do you have any sense of that? I know you work with, uh, I know you work with the Cherokees and I'm sure some other of the uh, large tribes in Oklahoma. What, what are your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, they're, uh, they're a little bit behind us. Uh, they, uh, of course, they're looking at their energy consumption and usage. And, uh, but some of them have some uh, good uh, uh, things going on. They're just not tracking a whole lot or measuring a whole lot. Our goal is to uh, take this uh, uh, scorecard and platform, and uh, I'm on another call uh, next week with the EPA, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, what uh, what it's going to take for them to uh, uh, engage and start measuring and, and gauging where they're at. 
uh, but then also we're uh, presenting at a sustainable uh, conference uh, that Cherokees are having pretty quick. So th that'll go out to a lot of tribes. And so we just want to get that out there also to them, uh, just get their tribal involvement uh, where they can uh, uh, jump on the uh, 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 scorecard too, if, if possible. Um, you know, our goals here for 2021 are to do more energy audits uh, next year in some of our buildings. We're trying to expand our employee involvement. Uh, I think sometimes when you get the employees in, involved and they see uh, what a good product or a good mission you have going and they believe in it, man, I, I tell you what, that, that helps your team. Uh, we're going to try to expand parts of the Muskogee Creek Nation to recycle more. Uh, we're looking at some different locations for some Monarch way stations. And also, uh, like they were saying, the educational outreach is also uh, critical next year uh, for not only for uh, citizens, uh, elderly, uh, school school age children, uh, and just the employee, uh, just to get them up there. Uh, if you can get them up behind their from their desk and doing them something, hey, it's a win, win, win. So we're looking forward to 2021. Great, thank you, James. Uh, Stephanie, trends in industrial settings. Anything pop in your mind? Sure. So I shared a little bit about some of the longer term industry trends, but I think for 2021, a lot of people are more interested in indoor air quality and being an HVAC manufacturer, we're very much in tune with that um, and providing high quality, clean indoor air at a, in an efficient manner. Um, I would say some of our other um, counterparts like Carrier recently just put out their first ESG report. And so I think that is a trend going forward of looking at how what your ESG reports look like and what you're doing in that area. Great, thank you. Uh, Richard, any thoughts uh, you know, manufacturing and or aviation aeronautics uh, trends? Yeah, a couple of trends uh, there again, just uh, the manufacturing side of it is, you know, just facilities design and optimization, you know, with the a lot of folks going virtual, does that does that become the new norm where we can repurpose areas of the factory for production instead of office space? So I think a lot of that is going to be a trend here in 2021 to see uh, what those uh, facilities optimizations look like. And then the other thing I kind of touched on earlier, again, is waste uh, and, and scrap coming in from you know, our suppliers, being able to push back into the supply base going back uh, to have them be as sustainable as we are and, and partner with them so that we can reduce some of this waste. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we did have a question from the audience and I don't know, uh, maybe maybe our panel can answer this. Um, it's in regard to solar farms. Uh, someone would like to install a solar farm in Claremore. Oklahoma, a very ambitious uh, individual. Anybody have any any thoughts, any panels have any thoughts about that one? I don't know, um, we have any solar energy people represented among this group? And we may have to, we may have to uh, refer this question to someone who could uh, give us an answer and we'll be sure to um, note the individual who made this question and get resources to that end of, to that person so she can get an yeah. answer on that my yeah we our teams reached out to her and and we're glad to visit with her with some some ideas and some connections for her as she okay. uh, navigates that project great great uh fine all right so uh we're just about out of, out of time here and uh if there are no further comments i just want to thank um everybody today uh the panelists and the sustainable tulsa staff for doing such a great job in coordinating this uh, in terms of future events, we do have a, a December uh, first Thursday, right? That's what that is that the last event of the year, Corey? Did you want to uh, what what is you want to mention that you want to mention what that's going to be? Uh, yeah, actually, I'll uh, pass the mic to Megan to kind of update us on uh, that program that's coming up. I guess we're actually working with uh, Oklahoma Food Bank. Uh, so December, uh, typically a, a great month to, to volunteer uh, and give back to the community. 
Uh, so we have a couple of volunteer opportunities that will actually go online tomorrow morning. So we'll send that link in this, uh, the email that will go out um, with the event recording and today's, uh, for today's event, as well as the, the survey um, from today's event. Uh, so Oklahoma Food Bank is one of our presenters. We'll also uh, talk more about uh, green gifting, hint, hint, Graham. And um, uh, and some other things that we can do during the season um, while still navigating a pandemic. So very excited about uh, our last first Thursday of the year. Great. Uh, thank you, Megan. So on behalf of the Sustainable Tulsa Board of Directors, thank you for joining us for our B2B Case for Sustainability Quarterly Series. Again, thank you for thank you to our sponsors, uh, DEQ, the Oklahoma Secretary of Environment and Energy, uh, American Waste Control, Integrity, Miller Environmental Transfer, One Oak, and Spirit Arrow Systems. We do so appreciate all of our panelists today, Graham, Stephanie, Sheila, James, and Richard. Uh, how about a round, round of applause again for this group? Great job, excellent work. We appreciate everything you've done. Uh, tomorrow, you will receive a survey about today's event, including a recording of this event. Please take a minute or two to complete the survey. The, the data used that we collect is very important, are evaluating the effectiveness of our program, so please take a minute to do that. Uh, again, if you're interested in joining Scorecard, and most of you are, who are on this call already have, uh, please contact Teresa Kerrigan if you'd like more information. Thank you again for attending. And thank you again to our sponsors. Uh, we know 2020 has been a very challenging year. We weren't, aren't able to meet in person. It brings us joy seeing you all here today. Look forward to our next B2B on February 25th. I'm guessing it's gonna be a prob probably another, another meeting online, right? I'm yes. Guessing. Yeah, probably. At this point, um, yes. Yes, um, uh, um, uh, but at, at some point, maybe we'll get some hybrid events maybe later in the year. Yeah, we're definitely uh, preparing for that. Okay. So uh, okay. we, we know we're eager to see you, um, yeah. but we want to do it safely. So we are, we're definitely preparing for Absolutely. that hybrid yeah. approach in 2021. So until uh, February, um, have a happy and safe rest of 2020 and uh, be safe uh, between your family gatherings coming up the next uh, few weeks. Uh, for those who want to stick around, we're going to launch you some breakout rooms so you can all say hi. Uh, we'll put you in three five-minute breakout rooms. If you have time, stick around to say hello. Otherwise, thank you and best wishes. <laughs>